Welcome to The Feast Life, where we empower you, the modern homeschool mom, to create a life and homeschool you love. One founded on faith, family, freedom, and fun. I'm your host, Julie Ross, creator of the award-winning homeschool curriculum, A Gentle Feast, and a certified Christian life coach. For more information on today's episode and to access my free gift for you, check out thefeastlife.me. Charlotte Mason once said, life should be all living, not a mere tedious passing of time. So on this show, we seek to savor the feast of life. Girl, grab your favorite beverage and pull up a chair. You are welcome at this table. All right, so in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to get some time back from our kids <laughs> and then how to think through our tasks with some of my ninja time hacks to increase our time as well. Okay, so if you remember from last week, I said you have to make time to get time. So you have to make the time to think about your time, like you did with the time on it and some of the things we're going to talk about today in order to get back more time. And I want you to see it as that, okay? So it's not a waste of your time to plan and prep and make things easier and do some of the tricks I'm going to tell you today. These are actually tools that once you do them, they actually give you more time later on. So you're investing a little time right now, maybe in some of these tools, but it'll yield more results later on. Okay. So here's my first time management ninja tax. <laughs> Get some time back from your kids. What in the world am I talking about? Okay. We do like to think, oh, I'm so busy. And if I didn't have to do this for my kid or that for my kid, like I would have so much more time, right? We tend to blame them sometimes for our lack of time or our busyness or our perceived overwhelm with all the stuff we have to do. And we're going to stop that, right? We're going to take ownership of our time. We are in control of it. Okay. But there are a few things we can do to get some time back. Sometimes you, some ways you might be somewhat wasting time that you could get back from your kids. Okay, so here's the first one. Let your children play. Now, granted, there's things we need to do. School is very important. They can't play all day long, okay? But for a lot of us, we have so much structured activities and our kids are going from one thing to the next and we're homeschooling and then we're going to this activity then we're going to that activity. And children just need time to play. Numerous studies have shown this. If you want some statistics, I did an interview with Jenny Urich from A Thousand Hours Outside, and I will link to this in the portal and put it on Facebook as well. But she's a wealth of knowledge. She interviews like the most amazing people on the Thousand Hours Outside podcast and all of their books, just of the importance of letting children have free play outside. Okay. And not just young children, but even teenagers need to be outside and it needs to be unstructured. So it's not like my child went outside to soccer lessons, but my child is outside playing. So many benefits. It teaches them problem solving. It teaches them critical thinking. It teaches them communication skills, how to problem solve, right? All the physical benefits, right? Like the gross motor and the fine motor skills and the balance and the sensory. So much benefits to play. So allow time in your weekly schedule. Remember this week, we're going to pretend that we have this blank time canvas and schedule things. Allow time in there for them to play. Also encourage them to play without you. <laughs> you can have pockets of time if you want to connect with each child. Okay. I'm going to play with you for 15 minutes in the mornings before we start school. And I'm going to play with you after lunch for 15 minutes, or I'm going to do X, Y, Z with you. Have it a set time for that so that they're not always constantly asking, mom, can you play with me? Mom, can you play with me? Mom, we want to encourage that kind of independence. I'm going to sit right here. I want you to go find like the most beautiful flower that you can in the backyard. Come bring it back to me. Encourage them. Charlotte Mason gives us an example. She calls it masterly inactivity. You're a master. It has structure to it, but you are not the primary playmate and the source of all ideas and encouragement with your children. They might be bored at first, but that's where the curiosity and the creativity and the invention of different things comes is when our children are bored. So let them be bored. But that will give you more time in your schedule when you have pockets of time where you're not having all those structured activities. 
and where your children are able to play independently. And if they know that they have a set time where they do get to play with you, it won't be the constant come play with me, come do this, that kind of thing. We want to teach them to play independently where you're still there, supervising, I'm here, I'm reading my book, but I can see you in the backyard, that kind of thing, especially when they're little, to encourage them to have some more independence in their play. Another way we can get back time is to encourage work independently. And it's a skill. So it's not, okay, you're in fourth grade now, so here's your list of all the things you have to do this week. Good luck and come back to me on Friday and we'll see if you did all your work. <laughs> Okay, that is child's not ready for that. My high schoolers aren't even ready for that. It's a gradual releasing of independence. And when they show you that they can handle something, then you can give them some more. But don't just give them everything all at once. I was explaining this to my teenager the other day about like driving, right? It's, if you want to be able to drive and go take the car off by yourself, like you need to show me that you're responsible in these things. I'm just not going to give you the keys to the car. Are you crazy? <laughs> I want you to show me that you're responsible with getting this thing done or whatever it is. And so it's the same thing with our children with school. Okay. You, can you go read this over there by yourself? I can still see you. Okay. Now come back to me and tell me what, what it was about. That is like a first independent step. Okay. I'm going to write these couple sentences. Now you write some sentences. We want it to be a gradual releasing of independence. Okay. The goal is not for them to do everything by themselves. <laughs> We homeschool, we want that connection, we want that relationship, right? But sometimes we can be fearful of giving that independence, or maybe we try to do too much. Like I was saying, we try, we give them the keys to the car before they're ready, and it doesn't go well, right? They get in like a wreck. Same thing, if we give them too much independence in their school, we realize they're not really doing it, or they're not learning the things. And so it needs to be a gradual but they don't need you. Again, Charlotte Mason Education is so helpful for this because you do not need to be the fountainhead of all knowledge. You are putting them in touch with great minds and great thinkers in these living books and in these resources who can teach them. They have that self-directed learning. We want to encourage that independent, driven, intrinsically motivated learning. So there's different ways to do it, but I encourage you to look at your schedule and say, are there any subjects or are there any things that maybe one day a week, I could give it to my kid and have them try it again with me being nearby, with me being available and see how it goes with them trying X, Y, Z now, instead of me being the one doing it or me having to sit with them and do it. Encourage that gradual independence, but start small, pick one thing. So as we're looking at our week, we're going to create like an ideal week as homework this week, look through it and say, okay, I've been reading this. I think my child could read this on their own. I'm going to give them half the chapter to go read by themselves over there where I can still see them and have them come back to me and tell me what it's about and see if they can do it and gradually build up that skill. Make chores easy. Okay, another way you can get back time is by having your kids do some of the chores. <laughs> okay, so we tend to overcomplicate this. I talk to people all the time, like, and I have this chore chart and it's color coded and we have stickers and I'm like, that sounds like a chore in itself. That sounds exhausting. I want to make chores easy. One of the ways I do this, and I did this many years ago, was I sat down and I wrote down all the things that have to get done on a weekly basis in our house. Like all the things. And I was like, okay, out of all these things that need to get done in the week in this house, what are some things that my kids can start to do? <laughs> and they were young at the time. And okay, this kid can start with this. This kid could start with that. Keep it simple and then teach your child the skill of that chore. So for example, like in this picture, it's washing dishes, right? You wanna make this as easy for them as possible. So maybe they need a stool. Maybe today we're gonna to do it together. Okay, now you're gonna start doing it one day a week. Now we're gonna gradually add on. I found for my kids, keeping where they are doing one chore for a specific period of time is more beneficial than changing up the chores every day. <laughs> because just like with you, right? If Think about it. If it was like your job and you're like, okay, today you're going to be doing surgery. Okay, tomorrow you're going to be doing taxes. And then on Thursday, you're going to be doing law. You'd be like, what? <laughs> I can't do all that, right? That's all too hard. So we want to give them one skill, one chore that they can kind of master and they could get really good at. I've had some chores, like my kids have been doing them for five years now. Like one kid, it's their job to take the trash out. That's all that child has done for the past five years. 
they are very good at it. <laughs> they they don't have to worry about um, do I have to sweep the floor today or do I have to do the dishes or whatever it is. Like they're like trash. I can think about the trash. Getting them really good at one thing before you add on a bunch to them. This also helps free up your mind because you're not constantly having to think through it. Okay, who's doing what today and how and when? And I do have my ki older kids. They do help make dinner one night a week and they do clean up the kitchen one night a week. And so that, what, what depending on what day of the week it is, it depends on what kid is doing that. But again, it started when they were young and it was like, you're helping me, you're my kitchen helper. And now it's okay. Now it's your responsibility to make dinner, but I'm here. I'm available if, if you need me. Again, it's that gradual release of responsibility. So we want to do that with chores. So think of the chores that you are currently doing. Are there any that your kids could do if they're young, they can do them with you, like folding laundry, drying dishes, those kind of things. And then we want to gradually build up that responsibility. So again, it's that idea of I'm going to make time to get time. So yes, it might take me longer to explain how to load the dishwasher this week. But once this child has done it every night this week and I've helped them with it, okay, now let's see if you can do it tomorrow by yourself. And I'm going to come and check it and see how you did. Okay, now let's see if you could do it two nights by yourself. Okay, now let's see if you could do it the whole week by yourself. It's the same thing with playing. It's the same thing with doing their school. All of it is a gradual releasing of responsibility. But to see it as I am taking this time to make time in the future. Let me jump in the chat because I feel like people are, have questions about some of this. I noticed that my ideas about play backfire. Either told or does it. Like, yes. So yeah, I'll let them come up with the ideas. You don't need to give them the ideas. When I raised my hand last week, it had to do with this. It's a rough week and I don't handle hearing certain things. My husband was mentioning he thought our kids should be doing a little bit more independently. He was totally right. And I'm glad this is being reiterated. Yeah, I'll help you to coach you with that today, Amanda. I struggle with this because I have an only child. So I feel guilty about her playtime without me. Is alone time for her. Sabrina says, I am one of five. Some of my absolute memories were when I was alone. Yeah, I was the only child for 13 years. Yes. Yeah. So you want to make sure, again, that's great, Lindsay, that you're not like putting some of your feelings of being alone. She might really love being alone. I was an only child as well. And I wrote a lot of poetry. I wrote a lot of books. I used to write songs, that kind of thing. But again, it doesn't mean you'll never play with her. I'm going to play with you for these 30 minutes. And that's fantastic. What an amazing gift you're giving your child of those 30 minutes. But then, okay. So for the next hour, I need hour might be a little too long for the next 30 minutes. I need you to play by yourself. What are some things that you could do? I can't wait to hear about it. And you still have that relationship and that closest. It's not, I'm busy. I'm in my office. Leave me alone. I'm working on something. I don't have time to play right now. Having that set time really does help with that because it takes some of that fear and anxiety away from your kids to play by themselves. What's the gradual process of teaching a new chore? Yeah. Like I said, doing it with them, inspecting it, starting small, adding on where they're doing it more independently. And man, I know it's probably silly to say, but does anyone feel guilty of maybe asking too much or too little? I don't. And I think that's something to really work through with a thought download, Amanda, is like, why do I feel guilty for asking my kids to do chores? What do I believe about that? What do I do believe about myself and do some of the thought work that we've been talking about? Again, this is why all that foundation is so important. That's how we feel when you read some of those books as well. Okay. So make sure I got everyone's questions there. Okay. My other ninja time hack is evaluate your regular tasks. Okay. So I guess the workbook wasn't up. I'm sorry about that. So if you have a piece of paper, just divide it into four sections, but all you need is a piece of paper really for this. And you divide it into four sections. So this is called the Eisenhower matrix. President Eisenhower developed this. And we're going to look at some of the tasks that you do on a regular basis and how we can think about them based on these four categories. So it's do it, dream it, delete it, or deal with it. So let me explain what these are. And then I want you to add some of the tasks that you do that might fit into these categories. Okay, so the first category is do it. These are tasks that you have to do and you enjoy doing them. So reading aloud to my children. I have to do it and I love it. Okay, so in the chat, is there any task that you have to do and you enjoy doing it? I love reading to myself before I go to bed at night. I love taking a bath. I love walking outside. What about for you? What are some 
things that you have to do and you love doing them. Okay, Lindsay's reading history, getting outside, watering plants. Love that, Mary. Organizing your home, reading aloud. Yeah. Cleaning the kitchen coop. That is amazing. <laughs> I love that, Kim. Okay, so what you want to do is go through your tasks and for homework, think through some more. But if it's something that you have to do and you enjoy doing it, how can you maximize that as you're planning out your week? How can you add, A, it better be on your week somewhere. <laughs> but how can you maximize that? Maybe even think of more of that. Sarah, that's totally normal. I was right there with you <laughs> for a very long time. I didn't really do anything in my regular activities that I enjoyed doing. And I was like, this is a problem. I might want to add some things that I actually love doing into my daily life because <laughs> that would feel good. So yeah, it's totally normal. It's great to have that awareness. Okay. So those tasks that you have to do and you enjoy doing them, you want to add more of those into your life. So think through that as you're planning out your week. Okay. Here's the next one. Dream it. You enjoy it, but you don't have to do it. Okay. So give me, I'll give you an example. Like I'm taking an adult ballet class. I had my class last night, once a week. I don't have to do it. No one's going to my house. My house is going to fall apart. My kids aren't going to be hurt if I don't go to ballet, <laughs> but I enjoy it. Okay. So what are some things that you enjoy doing, but you don't really have to? to do them. Maybe they feel like a luxury to you. I love getting my nails done. <laughs> I don't have to do it. <laughs> I just really enjoy it. I like having pretty nails, things like that. So is there anything that you enjoy, but you don't have to do it? Loving what you have to do. Don't worry, that's coming. <laughs> getting massage. Yes. I love that. Reading in the mornings, getting focused on planning in your planner. Love it. So these things that you enjoy doing, being alone, yep, going for a walk, love it. Hiking by myself, good. These things that you enjoy, but you don't have to do, these are things you can dream about. These are things that you do want to try to add to your regular calendar because these are what feeds your soul. So like me going to ballet, don't have to do it. I just really love doing it. I feel like I'm being a good steward of my body. Like it, it's something I used to love to do as a little kid was dance. And so it just makes me so happy. And so when I come home and I've taken ballet or even like today, I still feel so like refreshed and strong and peaceful. And that great feeling carries over into how I'm showing up today for my family like getting my nails, just like having an hour just to sit there. <laughs> and like the place I go, like they don't speak English, so nobody's talking to me. And uh, I like the big HGTV TV is on right there. And I can just watch HGTV for an hour and chill. And then I have pretty nails and they make me happy. I used to think like I didn't deserve that or it was selfish if I took an hour to myself. And I've had to realize these are things I can dream about. We're all in different seasons and those might not be realistic in your season. But some of us, we could make time for those in our schedule and we're choosing not to. And we feel like maybe I have to, or maybe it'd be selfish. I mean, but honestly, that just makes us feel resentful. We can feel like I'm a martyr. I'm doing everything for everybody. I never have any time for myself. You're not really making time for yourself. You're not purposely choosing to put that on your calendar and set aside that time. And so again, it doesn't mean you're indulgent and you're only doing things that you enjoy and don't have to do all day long. Come on, be realistic. None of us are gonna do that, I don't think from what I've known about you guys, right? But some of us don't take any time to enjoy anything in our weeks. And then we wonder why we're exhausted and burnt out and tired and resentful and bitter. So dream about it. As we're going through these tasks, think about what is something I would like to do? What is something I actually enjoy doing? And am I doing it on a regular basis? Am I putting it on my calendar and making it a priority? All right, then... Delete it. So these are things you don't have to do and you don't enjoy them. So these are things you maybe have signed up for something. But you don't really have to do it and you actually don't enjoy it. 
Uh, this could be scrolling on your phone. Anybody realize that this week? You don't have to do it. There's no reason. You know, nobody's making you do it. And you might enjoy it for a little bit, but after a while, it leaves you feeling like overwhelmed and you find yourself like comparing yourself to other people or you feel like overwhelmed by all the horrible things that are happening in the world. And it's just like draining you. Does anyone have anything that you are currently doing? You don't have to do it and you don't like it. Wasting time on phone, yeah. Yeah, so has to do, we're gonna get to that in a second here, just wait for that. Yeah, dream of you can be a little fuzzy, Sabrina. I guess it's more, yeah, I would feel like walking is actually something, like taking care of your body physically is something you do have to do. How you do it though, could be more of like a dream. So yes, taking care of my body is very important. Does that have to be ballet? No, it could be something else that I really love ballet. Does that make sense? So that was like a dream to try to do something with dance again after, gosh, 25 years or something like that. But I could take care of my body other ways. That is a thing I do have to do is be a good steward of my physical body. So I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, deleting, micromanaging my kids. That is so good and letting them struggle and grow, right? You don't have to jump in and fix everything. And most of the time we don't actually enjoy that. We think we do. That is such a perfect example. I love that. That is great. This one is difficult. Yes, this one is very difficult. <laughs> and you might not have anything, Kim. You might not have anything that you have to do that you're doing on a regular basis and you don't enjoy it. And we're going to talk about what to do with some of these in a second here. Today's episode is brought to you by A Gentle Feast. A Gentle Feast offers a complete living books curriculum, an award-winning early reading program, and more tools to equip you to apply Charlotte Mason's timeless philosophy into your modern homeschool. Go to agentlefeast.com to check it out. Smooth and easy days are closer than you think. I just want you to start to think of your tasks in these groupings. And again, it's not like a clear cut boundary black and white line here. These can be fuzzy and some can go, again, it's a nuance, but it's just a way of thinking about your tasks differently. Okay. And then these are the tasks you have to deal with. You don't enjoy it, but you have to do it. So someone mentioned like the cleaning, the cooking, the laundry, okay? Now, some of you might love that. So again, this is for, everybody's different here. So some of you are like, I love doing laundry. Okay, that's great. But then the rest of us, <laughs> like me, I do not. So these are tasks that you don't enjoy doing, but you have to do. We have to eat so we can keep living. So like making dinner, grocery shopping, meal planning, those are all things that I have to do. I don't particularly enjoy them. And I'm going to talk through some strategies about what to do with these. So this might be a big category for you, depending on how you're viewing your tasks currently and how you're spending your time. Okay. So once we have some tasks in these four categories, so hopefully you're able to think of something in them, then we can come up with some strategies. So again, if it's something that you just really enjoy doing and you have to do it, keep going. How can you add more of that into your day? Like the, I love reading aloud. How can I do more of that? Okay. The dream it are those things that you really enjoy, but you don't have to do. Dream up how those might work in your schedule. What are some things that you might want to try? Delete it are the things that like scrolling on your phone, maybe something that you've committed to that you don't have to do it and you don't enjoy doing it. Those things can go. And then deal with it. These are the things we don't enjoy, but we have to do. So how can we deal with them better in order to maximize our time? Okay, so here's the first thing you can do when you have to deal with something. You don't enjoy it, but you have to do it. The first thing is delegate it. Again, looking at those tasks in your week, looking at the household chores that have to be done in a week, what is something you can delegate to somebody else? It may be your children. It may be a spouse. It might be hiring someone. Same with school, right? You might want to hire a high school kid who loves math to come over and help your kid with math for 30 minutes a week or whatever. You might want to share with another mom who just loves doing science experiments and you love reading history and you're going to take turns. Like, evaluating your week like this allows you to be creative and think of solutions you might not have thought of. 
So even if you look at it and go, there's nothing I could delegate to somebody else, I have to do all of this myself. I want to encourage you. There's always possibilities. So just make note of those things that you love to delegate. Be open to what might happen. You never know. Next week, you could be sitting at uh, the pool for your kid's swim lesson and some mom starts talking about how much they love doing science experiments. And you're thinking, I can't stand doing science experiments. And you're like, that's so wonderful. Please tell me your secret. I really don't like doing science experiments. And they go, yeah, I just love it. I used to be a science major. It's so much fun. I love getting all messy and being curious and having things not work. But man, I really hate teaching history. And you're like, oh, I love it. Like, you don't know the possibilities here, people. So be open. Start thinking, though, of what are some things that I could get off my plate and have somebody else do who actually does enjoy X, Y, Z. Other people might really love mopping the floor. I'm not one of those people. I would love to pay someone else to mop my floors and clean my baseboards because to me, that is like physical torture. It is my least favorite chore. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what do I have to do? What's some kind of like side way I can make a little bit of income so I can hire someone to wash the baseboards and mop the floors because I don't want to do it. So be open to some possibilities for delegating, okay? Bundle. I told you before, multitasking makes us feel drained. It makes us feel overwhelmed. We're not as productive. We don't put out as quality of work when we're multitasking. So bundling though is slightly different. So bundling is taking a mundane task, a task you don't enjoy, and bundling it with something you actually do enjoy. Okay, so follow me with this one. Something you don't enjoy doing. I don't enjoy doing dishes, okay? I could delegate that. I could teach a kid how to do dishes, right? Okay, I, but I could also bundle it. I love listening to podcasts. I love listening to audiobooks. When I do the dishes, I listen to something I'm feeding my mind. Do I enjoy doing the dishes? No, <laughs> but I enjoy listening to the podcast. It makes that task I don't enjoy a little bit more tolerable, okay? You can also bundle some other tasks that you have to get done. Like I have to make, I, I like to call my dad once a week and check in, check in on him. I enjoy talking to my dad. So I could put that with a task that I don't really like doing. I could be on the phone talking to my dad at the same time. Let's say you want to get more physically active. You want to go for a walk. Could you put the baby in the stroller and let the baby take a nap while you're going for a walk? <laughs> now you're bundling things together to be more productive with your time. So you're not multitasking. You're not trying to like answer emails while you're teaching math to your five-year-old, okay? <laughs> That's not gonna work for either one of you. Neither one of you are gonna be able to focus as well. But it's putting some mundane task in with a task that you do enjoy, if that makes sense. It says, I've seen this matrix a lot, but something just clicked when Julie explained do versus dream. The must do is connected to my values. That's why it's so different for everybody. Like I can't tell you, so the must in the deal with a category is connected to a value. Yes, perfect. Yep, you're going to find a better way to motivate yourself to do it because it is something that needs to get done. It's important. It's something you value for your family for sure. Okay, another thing that we can do with things we don't necessarily enjoy doing, but we have to do is batch like tasks together. This has been a game changer for me in terms of productivity. As someone with ADHD, my brain goes it's like a little ping pong thing all the time. And those of you who listen to me teach are like, yes, we see this, Julie. <laughs> we know this about you. But batching like tasks together is so helpful because you're not doing that content switching multitasking that drains your focus. So I try looking at your tasks through the week and saying, which of these tasks can go together? Okay, on Tuesday, I'm running to CVS to pick up a prescription. Then Wednesday, I'm going by the dry cleaners. And then Thursday, I'm going to go like grocery shop. Those are all errands. Can I batch all of my errands together and have one afternoon where I go and I knock all those things out? That's one of the ways I batch my time because, you know, to put on a bra and put on makeup is a lot of work. So if I'm gonna have to go out of the house, I wanna do all those tasks in one big swoop. Okay, what are some other tasks that you can batch? Making phone calls, I hate making phone calls. I hate scheduling doctor's appointments and calling people back and dealing with XYZ person. I just ugh, do not like making phone calls. 
So I have a set time in my calendar where I make all of my phone calls, not like calling my dad or my friends, but like all of those like kind of appointment -y administrative phone calls. I batch those all together. All the times like I need to do like correspondence, like pay bills or answer emails or schedule trips, those kind of things. Like I try to batch those together. So that makes sense. It's like tasks that go well together, putting them together in your calendar and giving yourself like a block of time. Like for the next hour, I'm going to make phone calls. <laughs> that helps you focus again, because you're not doing this content switching of I'm making phone calls. I'm answering emails while I'm trying to make dinner while so-and-so is asking me questions about history. And then, oh, I remember I have to book that trip. Like your brain can be all over the place. But when you're doing like tasks together and have a set period of time, you're actually able to be more productive and focus better. So what do you do when both you and your husband hate making phone calls? <laughs> yeah, so again, it's something I don't enjoy doing, but I have to do it. So I try to pair it doing one of these things here. Most likely you're not gonna be able to delegate it if you both don't like it, unless you hire a personal assistant, which I'm still waiting to hire one of those one of these days. <laughs> I joke about it all the time to my kids. I'm like, let me call my personal assistant and I'll get right on booking that uh, event for you or figuring out how we're gonna get you to X, Y, Z. You can bundle. So if it's something you hate making phone calls, but you love, I'm trying to think of something you could do while making phone calls that wouldn't be like dangerous. I was gonna say take a bath, but then I'm like, you might like to keep yourself. Walking on a treadmill or sitting out on a swing outside because you love being outside in nature. That might work. Batching. So again, instead of, oh, I got to make a phone call today. Oh, I forgot to call that guy back. Oh, I got to make an appointment for the doctor. If you have a set time on your calendar, which I do, I call it family admin time. And during that time, I pay bills, I make phone calls. Like, it's just what I do. So now it's, do I love it? No, but I don't dread it and procrastinate about it. And it actually gets done because, oh, this is my admin time. One of the things I really don't like doing is budgeting. Like, really hate it. Like, really hate it. <laughs> so I've had to incorporate some of these principles here, okay? I could delegate it. I do have a bookkeeper for my business, but personally, I'm still the one doing all the stuff, okay? But I can bundle it. I could put on my favorite Netflix show and light a candle and make my budget date with myself like super fun for the next 30 minutes. It's budget time. Like you learn little ways to make something more fun. Your brain will be more motivated to do it. And then I batch it. I don't try to pay bills on Tuesday and pay my credit card some other day and do my budget another day. Like I do it all the finance in my little money date that I have with myself. So it's money time. <laughs> Putting all those tasks together makes it so you're not exhausted because you're not constantly thinking about them throughout your whole week. Another way that you can do with things you don't enjoy but have to do is to start to believe differently. Start to try to think about those tasks in a different light, okay? Instead of saying, I have to pay the bills. I have to do the dishes. I have to call the roof guy back. Start using words like, I get to, I'm choosing to, right? So then we don't feel like we're a victim to this horrible thing that I have to do of call, making a doctor's appointment. Start to believe differently about it and go, wow, it's so amazing that I'm able to call a doctor anytime I want and get my kid an appointment and they get to have this amazing healthcare and people take care of them. That's really awesome. Oh, wow, we made a really big mess tonight in the kitchen. Isn't it so amazing? that we have food to eat and we have a kitchen to be in together as a family. Like, wow, it's so amazing that we got to share this meal together. Again, it's going back to your thoughts and starting to think about things differently. When we have a task that we dread and we keep telling ourselves, I have to do it. I don't like it. I have to do it, right? Our brain gives us so much resistance. So just even starting to think differently about it can help to break through some of that resistance. So again, if you have a task in that category, you're gonna have a whole bunch probably in this deal with it category because that's life, okay? So things you have to do, but you don't enjoy doing. How can we work through those so they're not so painful, so we don't procrastinate, so we don't keep putting them off, so we don't multitask, so we don't do all these things that are wasting our time or we don't like it, so we start to buffer and we spend an hour on our phone instead of just calling the doctor that would have taken five minutes speaking for myself here with this one we don't see how much we are wasting our time by doing these things we can delegate it 
find somebody else to do it. We can bundle it. We can put it with something we actually do enjoy doing and find fun. We can batch it. We can put it with other like tasks so we can be more focused during our time doing that thing. Or we can start to believe different. Or we can do a combination of these different things. But these will help you learn to deal more productively in a more focused way with some of those tasks that you may put off because you don't actually like doing them. All right, you'll be doing that more for homework and I have some more questions to go through with that, but I just wanted to touch on that now. Okay, my next thing to have is stop making so many decisions. We have to make so many decisions on a regular basis. When you make decisions, it's draining your brain energy. Decisions, trying to resist temptation, having self-control, multitasking. The more we do those things, the less willpower we have. So it takes a tremendous amount of willpower for us to do things that we don't want to do, to make choices about things, to resist eating the cookies or going on the phone, to have the self-control, to do the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be making phone calls right now, but my phone just went ding and I want to read it and see who texted me. I'm supposed to be making these phone calls, right? Multitasking, trying to do this while you're doing that. It drains your willpower. And Charlotte Mason talks about the power of will. It is a muscle. We can strengthen our willpower, but we can only get it so far. And so we want to stop doing things that are draining our willpower on a regular basis. We don't want to always have to will ourselves to do something. So how can you automate some things in your life so you don't have as many decisions? There's a reason why Bill Gates, is Bill Gates? No, Steve Jobs. There's a reason why Steve Jobs wore a black shirt and a pair of jeans every day to Apple. One less decision. His brain was more creative. It was able to think of new technologies and new marketing ideas, right? Make less decisions. Whether it's what you wear, what you eat, how many activities you're all, all are in, how can you automate these things? I'm wearing the same thing or eat the same thing, a lot of the meals. I just try to think through some ways you can automate some things in your life. Resisting temptation. It takes so much willpower to not eat the cookies. Don't bring the cookies in the house. <laughs> if it takes so much willpower to not be looking at your phone while you're, you're doing history with your child, put the phone in the bedroom. Okay, we want to make it easy for ourselves. We don't want to always have to be using our will. Make it easy to do the dishes if you hate doing the dishes. Get some like super awesome smelly dish soap and some pretty dish towels and <laughs> light a candle and put on some pretty music. So you're not having to use so much willpower all the time. Okay, here's my other ninja hack. Create before you consume. We live in a consumer society, right? We are bombarded with information constantly. We're constantly getting input from a million different places. We're constantly consuming. Before you consume in the morning, I encourage you to create something that feeds your but physical body, it could feed your soul, it could feed your stomach, it could feed your mind, but creating something. I talk about this a lot when I talk about having a morning routine, and I've talked about that before in a lot of different places. So if you've never been in one of my programs before and heard me talk about it, go listen to episode 11 of The Feast Life, where I talk about having a morning routine, but you need to create and nourish yourself first thing in the morning. So if the first thing you do in the morning is grab your phone and start scrolling on social media or reading emails, you're consuming before you're creating. And God created us to be creative beings. We need to create and nourish ourselves first. This has been huge for me because I was like just consuming in the morning and I was already like feeling so depleted before my kids even woke up in the morning. <laughs> So it doesn't have to be 30 minutes. You can start with 10 minutes, okay? But do something that is creative and nourishing for you first thing in the morning. Maybe it's making a beautiful cup of coffee. My friend has this like French press thing, which is really complicated. I have a Keurig. So I'm like, I just, that takes a lot of thinking, but she loves it. It tastes so good. I love it when she makes me some French press. 
but she's like creating in the morning. It's like this beautiful, like art piece of coffee. And it just makes her happy. Maybe it's for you. It's creating a beautiful space where you can go and have like your quiet time and you can journal and you can pray, like whatever it is for you, even if it's just for a few minutes, this will transform the way you show up for the rest of your day. So again, I've talked about this a million times, but I wanted to put that here because that is like my top ninja hack for me. I do all my writing in the morning. I wake up at five in the morning. I do my powerhouse 30 and then I write like emails, blog posts, social media, like the things I have to do for work. I, that is my creative time. That is when our brains are most creative. And so if there is something that you've been wanting to learn or do, how can you add that into your morning routine and find something creative? So again, it's just might be creating a beautiful space to worship. It might just be creating a beautiful cup of coffee. Keep it simple. But how can you nourish yourself in the morning before you start consuming and start taking care and expending all of your energy taking care of everyone else? Okay, so those are just a few of my little hacks. Hey there, Julie Ross here. I just wanted to say thank you for listening to today's episode. If you like this show, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a positive review in iTunes. This really does help people learn about the podcast. And each month, I will pick a winner to receive a free gift. Don't forget to check out all the free resources we created for you at thefeastlife.me. Thank you.